So how make radio is both a question and a statement. The question is, we are trying to do something that's never been done before with radio technology, uh, exploring a new domain, but it's also a declarative statement that we're, we're here to get things done. We're here to perform. You know, first and foremost, we come from non-traditional educational and engineering backgrounds. So neither of us work as radio engineers. I didn't go to college myself. We're both largely self-taught, especially in the radio space. And so we're coming at this from more of a you know, scrappy nature of the team. We're the only team that's qualified for phase three that entered late. So we qualified for the competition in phase two, a year and a half after all of our competitors had gotten started. Uh, whereas our competitors had 24 months to go from uh, qualifying in phase one to competing in the semifinals in phase two, we had six months to meet those same stakes. You know, Mark is a glutton for DARPA competitions. This is his third DARPA competition he's participating in. You know, we have the skill set to compete in this. You know, we finished middle of the pack in phase two, but we did so with such limited um, time and financial resources that we're, we're feeling pretty good. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of work to do, but we're also pretty excited that we've been able to come in and compete. You know, we've, we've more or less caught the pack, and now I think we're at the point where we're going to be able to continue to improve our performance and make a really good showing at the finals in October. One of the reasons why I think we were successful in phase two was the fact that we were dealing with such limited time and, and, and had no funding. It forced us to be really scrappy and extremely judicious about how we spent our time and the, the parts of the problem that we tried to solve. And we, we kept things as low complexity as possible, and the idea was we didn't want to over-engineer any solution or allocate too much time to something that wouldn't give us measurable benefit in the competition. We both have quite a bit of experience working in cybersecurity, so one thing that we're always thinking about is how to design for failure. Well, I think it's fun to approach engineering problems with the background of understanding how to break things because it allows us to make these more resilient systems and be able to plan for the unexpected and hopefully react to things that we haven't seen before. We were both builders before we were breakers. You know, Mark spent years as a software engineer before he, he got into security research. Uh, same with myself. You know, I was an embedded systems engineer, and the wireless and security kind of came later. We can look at problems through both lenses. Being able to, to view the task of a builder through the, through the eyes of a breaker enables you to think about how your designs may be co-opted and build them in a more resilient and secure way. And the way I like to think of it is that, you know, the, the more knobs we have to turn, the more moving parts, the more code we write, the more things that can break. And so if we can distill it down to the absolute, you know, lowest complexity, simplest solution that just minimizes our risk by, you know, having a smaller attack series, we might say, of fewer things that can break or otherwise be, um, you know, problematic. The problem that DARPA has asked us to solve is a very broad, expansive, and multivariate problem. So being able to process information and make decisions based on a number of different inputs uh, is, is key. We designed our network in a way that we wanted to be very light and, and extensible. What makes our solution unique is we've taken a fundamental physical layer design that's pretty solid and performant, and we've layered distributed decision making on top of it. We have a little bit of kind of network coordination centralized on one radio, but then all the other radios in the network are free to make their own decisions to optimize their own outcomes. We were pretty confident with the submission we put forth for PE2. So a lot of it was just really just sanity checking what we had, making some minor optimizations, and really above all else, making sure that we didn't break anything. <laughs> yes, the, the days leading up to our, our submission were especially uh, tricky. Uh, so Matt was uh, on the East Coast of the United States. I was in um, the United Arab Emirates. Despite being 12 hours apart, we spent almost every waking hour saved for one or two hours a day working on this, taking half an hour naps where needed just to get the, the last bit of work done and, and get our submission in. So it was a pretty pretty trying and, and uh, intense uh, last few days. I, re I still remember the, the, the message I sent to Mark on Signal where like, you know, cutting the image, it's like, this is the release candidate. This is it. We're gonna stick with this unless we find any critical bugs. We finished in ninth place out of 15. We were 20 points out of eighth. It would have won us money at PE2 and 25 points out of seventh place. So we were right in the hunt. Luckily, DARPA was kind enough to make the uh, four half prizes available and it was uh, great to be able to qualify for one of those and help fund our team through this year. We spent so much time preparing for PE2, just getting our, our radio working and stable and so we didn't put as much time in our decision engine as we would have ideally, and so phase three is really about uh, building out and solidifying that decision logic, and I think we're going to see more intelligent collaboration from our radios than we saw in PE2. For PE2, we delivered the table stakes of having a radio that was performant and the decision making necessary to perform well enough for a simplified version of DARPA's ultimate rule set. Now throughout phase three and heading into SCE this fall, uh, we have to take that foundation that we've built and build 
more sophisticated decision making on top. Uh, I'm really excited to see what uh, sort of performance and, and behavior is going to fall out of that. I'm Mark. And I'm Matt. We are Team Howmake Radio.